Kia ora. Welcome to week three of 160204. The first lecture this week we're going to look at just a very first look at numerical methods for differential equations. We're going to look at Euler's method. Now we are going to return to this topic in more detail later in the course, but it's a good idea to have a, a first look at it now uh, so we can keep it in mind as we go through. Now the reason we need numerical methods, so computer methods for getting uh, for solving differential equations, is most differential equations can't be solved analytically using calculus to get a formula for the, the solution. Even first order equations cannot often be solved, or often cannot be solved. And when you get to comp more complicated partial differential equations, like the equations that describe the motion of the atmosphere, for example, that you need to solve to do uh, weather forecasting, of course that's far too complicated to solve analytically. So numerical methods for differential equations are a major application of uh, computational science. Here we're just going to have a first look. So we're going to consider a um, very typical problem, dy dx equals f of x and y. And we may be given a starting value. And the idea is instead of getting a smooth curve, so for getting y as a function of x, we're going to evaluate the or approximate the solution at discrete points. So from that point we might go on to here, we might go on to here, this x and y, and so on, x3, y3. So the little subscripts in there indicate the time step. x0, y0, y0 is the initial condition, or initial value, y at initial value of x must be the initial value of y. And the easiest thing is for the x values just to step along in a constant step size. And we're going to call the step size h. And so on. So the x values will step up at a constant rate, just adding on a certain step size. And the challenge now is how do you update the y values? You choose the step size. Now the step size is important. If you have a smaller step size, you'll generally have smaller errors, but you'll have to do more work, more calculations. And even on a, uh, even on a supercomputer, with a large complicated set of differential equations like the, in fluid mechanics, that is in fact a genuine limitation. Okay, so the method we're going to consider this time is called Euler's method, invented in the middle of the uh, 18th century by Leonard Euler. And it works like this. Just work with a diagram. Here I've said y of 0 equals y0, so Here's my starting value is at uh, x equals 0. And the point is this. The differential equation, as we saw with the direction field, the differential equation tells you what the slope of the solution is at each point. So at, if I just evaluate f of x0, y0, that tells me what the slope of the solution is. So I know the slope of the solution. So that means the real solution must be starting out in this direction. Oops. And then it might curve away. So here is the exact solution. And the idea of Euler's method is to just take a straight line step in the direction f of x and y. So with slope f of x naught y naught. So I've drawn it like that. It's not a brilliant drawing, but it indicates that you're going in the right, starting out in the right direction. But you will commit an error because the exact solution will typically bend away. Now for the next step, I have to start at the wrong point. So that's uh, already it's starting to look a little bit dodgy. I have to start at this point, x1, y1. I'll evaluate the slope at this point, so f of x1, y1. And I'll go that way. And I'll do a realistic example in a second and we'll see how large the errors are. 
So for the formula for this is going to be the new x is going to be the current x plus the step size and the new y is going to be the current y plus h times the slope. Why is that? Let's just do a zoom in there. Um, got a little triangle. This side is h. The slope, this is going to be f of x y n, which means slope rise over run is going to be f of x n y n. Now there's another way, so these are the formulas for Euler's method. Now there's another way of deriving that. Uh, I can use the fact that dy dx, the derivative that appears in the differential equation, is the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. That's the definition of the derivative. So this is going to be approximately equal to what I get by just using a fixed value of h. Hopefully a small value. So if you just replace dy dx in the differential equation by this approximation, called a finite difference quotient, that will lead to Euler's method. So what we want to do now is try out this formula and see how it works. So you're going to be using this formula initially for n equals 0, and then again for n equals 1, 2, 3, you're using the same formula over and over again with new values of x and y each step. So it's an iterative method. So here's the formula for Euler's method. There's the update rule for y. The approximation you get y n is approximately equal to the exact solution. The two wavy lines there mean approximately equal to. And we're going to be interested in how accurate is that approximation. The error is going to be the exact value minus the approximate value. And often you don't care if it's plus or minus uh, error, so you take the absolute value of the error. Now, to do a lot of steps of Euler's method by hand would be a lot of computation. You do need to try it out by hand a few times just to make sure you understand how it all works. But in general, it's going to be done on a computer. So here we go, here's a sample of differential equation. Apply five steps of Euler's method, first with step size 0.1 and then again with step size 0.05, a smaller step size, to this differential equation with this initial condition. And check the errors. Well, to check the error, it looks like you need to know the exact solution. In this case, this equation I do know how to solve. It's actually, it's linear and it's separable, so you can use either of the methods we've done so far. So the exact solution is y of x equals e to the x plus a half x squared. Now normally, of course, you don't have access to the exact solution. That's why you're doing a numerical solution. This is just for the purpose of illustration. So here we go. Let's make a table. Values of n. It says five steps. So I'm going to have my initial conditions and then five steps. I'm going to record my values of x. So Here's the initial condition, so the starting x value is 0. It's going to go up in steps of 0.1 initially. I can fill those in ahead of time. My starting value of y is 1. And here I go. Just remember the formula. y n plus 1 is y n plus h f of x n and y n. So when I'm uh, computing y1, I'm going to be using the x and y from the previous line. So that means y1 is going to be y0 plus hf of x0 y0. y0 is 1. h is 0.1. What is f of x and y is this function here, 1 plus x times y. x is 0, y is 1. So that's 1.1, and then I write it in. So there's a little side calculation here to do for every single step. I'll do the next one as well. y2 is going to be y1 
plus h f of x1, y1. That's going to be 1.1 1 .1 plus 0 0.1 times the function value is 1 plus x times y. Did I do that correctly? Oh, I see I just uh, should have put some parentheses in there. 1 plus x all times y. So 1 plus x. Current value of x is 0.1. So I get 1.1. That's 1 plus x times y, which is 1.1. And that comes out to be 1.221. So I write that in. So from here, I'm just going to write the answers in, having calculated them previously. It comes out to be uh, 1.3. Six, seven, five, one point five four five three, one point seven six one six. Now to get more data here, I need to comp I need to check the errors, and I also need to repeat it with a smaller time step. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to Octave and and uh, do the calculations that way. Now here we are in Octave. Now Euler's method is not that complicated. If you just wanted to do a few steps, say five steps, you could just type in the formulas interactively at the prompt here. But since I want to later on make the step size much smaller, like 0 0.01, and do lots and lots of steps, it's much better to write a little script for that. So I have a script here, which I will just talk you through. So we're going to apply Euler's method to this test equation. I'm going to want to run it with uh, step size 0.1 initially. Semicolon means don't print that out. I've put in the initial conditions, x equals 0 and y equals 1. And here I have a loop. So my n here, which is uh, going 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that's going to make me do 5 steps in total. And I have to make sure that I update the y using the old value of x and y which is in this initially will be the initial conditions. So here's my formula for Euler's method. And then I update the x value. And I'm also going to calculate the exact value. Exact value of y is e to the x plus a half x squared. Then I'll print out my results. So it's the step number, which I've just seen a bug. Uh, when n is 0, I'm actually calculating the results for x1 and y1. So I should print out x n plus 1 the x, the y, the exact y, and the error. And then I end my for loop. Uh, in MATLAB that's slightly different. You just type end, I believe, instead of end for. So let's go back and I've called my program Euler. See here it's saved here in a file name called euler.m. It's often called an m file. And then I just type Euler and it will run. And here are my five steps. So when n is 1, x was 0.1, y was 1.1, that's what I got by hand. The exact value of the solution was 1.11, so the error was 0.01. Not too bad. When n is 2, my approximation was 1.221, the exact value was 1.246, so the error is a little bit bigger. And so on for the five steps. Now you can see that the errors do start out small, and then they get bigger. And that's just an unavoidable feature of doing a numerical solution basically goes back to the fundamental problem that predicting the future is difficult. You, if you know the current state of a physical system and you know its laws of motion, you think, great, I can go into the future and know what its state is going to be. But unfortunately, often the errors will grow as you forecast further and further into the future, just like uh, with weather forecasting. It gets less reliable the further you want to forecast into the future. Okay, so we'll remember those numbers. Uh, let's say remember the error where at time 0.2, when x is 0.2, the error was 0.025. Now we'll go back and make the step size smaller. Save it. So here's the advantage, of course, of having the program. You don't have to do all the calculations yourself over again. And now, uh, this, you see the x is now going up in steps of 0.05. I didn't reach such a large value of x, 
But here we see when x is 0.2, I now get error 0 0.013. So before, my error was 0 0.025. Now my error is at the same x value is 0 0.013. It's smaller. Actually, it's about half the size. Now that's not a coincidence. With Euler's method, if you halve the step size, you will approximately halve the error. But in return, you have to do twice as much work to reach a particular value of x. So that's one way of doing Euler's method, just doing a few steps and repeating with a smaller value of h and then examining the numbers that you get. But what if you want a very accurate solution? Well, if you only know Euler's method, all you can do is use a very, very small value of h. I'm going to use 0 0.01. And then I don't want to just print out a list of 100 numbers. I'd like to maybe graph the solution. So that's the second program I've got here, called Euler P for Euler Plot. And this one has this new variable called n steps for number of steps. It's the number of time steps I want to take. And I'm going to want to solve the differential equation starting at x equals 0 and going up to x equals 1. And that means my step size to do n steps number of steps, my step size will be 1 over n steps. So if I set n steps equals 100, h would be 1 over 100, it's 0 0.01. Now to plot the solution, I have to save all of my x and y values so that I can in vectors so that I can plot the whole thing at once. So here I am initializing these vectors, and since I go from x0 to xn, that's n plus 1 points. So I initialize it to be a row vector with n steps plus 1 components. put the initial conditions into the first place there. Now, unfortunately, the way array indexing works, x1 is going to be my, the first element of the vector x is going to be my x0. It's just the way the convention works. Now I do my loop for n equals 1 to n steps, so that's n steps number of steps. Update y, so my first step is going to put the answer into y2, using the current x and y, and then update x. And then plot them, plot x against y, and then also plot x against the exact solution so I can compare them. So before I run this, I have to set the value of n steps to be how many steps I want to take. So if we do a small number of steps, five steps, type Euler P to run the program, you can see. Um, well, first off, you see two things. One is that the errors are quite big by the time you've reached x equals 1. And secondly, you, you can see this piecewise linear approximation here that's typical of Euler's method. It's, a, it's sort of a, a straight line approximation of the solution. But if I make n steps bigger, you can see the error is a bit smaller and the solution curve is a bit smoother. So here I see the numerical solution and the exact solution. I think um, the blue one is the numerical solution and the red one is the exact solution. It's supposed to be getting up to 4.5. So we really want to go much bigger. Let's go 100. And now we're looking pretty good. The error is quite small. And down here, at the beginning part, the error is so small you can't even see it. Now, of course, this is quite a simple differential equation, so I could make n very, very large indeed. I could make it a thousand or a million if I wanted. There's really no point. But when you have a large system of differential equations, lots of equations to deal with at each time step, then it gets very expensive. So I would recommend um, doing both things. I'd recommend doing a few steps of Euler's method by hand to make sure you understand it and then also doing it in MATLAB and checking your hand results against what the MATLAB tells you. Now, you may have lots of questions in your mind about how this could be improved. Um, this was a very simple method. There are lots of ways to improve it. And in particular, what, what we'll see later on is by doing a slightly more complicated method, you can make the errors decrease much faster so that instead of the error halving when you have h 
you might have the error go down by a factor of 10 or 20 or more when you have H. So for a fixed amount of extra work, you can get a much better Im improvement in the error. So that's very important. And the second thing is it's also a good idea if you can estimate the errors without knowing the exact solution. Because the whole reason for doing numerical solutions is when you don't have access to the exact solution, that means you have to know how reliable your calculations are without knowing the exact answer. And we'll see later on that we can do that too.